for July, we had the 494.4 times 0 0.7, 70% enter. And that's how the breakout's going to be. So that's the, the 494.4. I'm not talking about how much cash we've received yet. We'll do that next time. All we're doing here is saying, here's the total sales. Uh, here's the portion of it that is going to be on for cash. Here's the proportion of it that will be for credit. So we know that we're going to collect this in July, of course, and we're going to have to determine when we collect this uh, based on the, the problem, what the problem gives us. And in this case, we're going to collect it all in the following month in August. And we'll take a look at that next time. So in August, we're going to say total sales of 474 times, we're going to say 0.3 or 30% in um, will be for cash equals the 47400 times 0.70%, which will be on credit. And of course, those two again add up to the 47400. You can do the same thing for, for September. You could copy the formula across, of course, but we'll calculate this so that we can see it. So we have the sales times 0.3 for cash. And then we're going to say this equals the sales times 0.7. That's the amount that we're going to sell on credit. So now we're going to use that information to try to think about our cash flows. So now we're going to think of our cash receipts. And if we think of our cash receipts, of course, the, the, the amount in July that we sold for cash, we're of course going to receive in July. So of the sales that we sold for cash, the 30%, we're just going to say, yeah, obviously this, uh, 148.3 is going to come in. I can copy that across, but in August, we're going to say this 141.120 that we uh, sold for cash in August. We're obviously going to get the cash in August. That's going to be the cash flow. In September, we're going to say that's obviously the, the sales that we made in September for cash. We're going to receive the cash on that. Then we have collections of receivables. Let's just call it AR. So th this is going to be the amounts that we sold on account, but then we're going to get the cash in the following month. And again, you could have some problems that are more complex than this that would say that we get some of the money in the next month and some of the money in the following month and not have all the money collected in the following month. But just remember that you're going to have some type of timing difference, meaning that if we sold, for example, in July, this 148.320 on account, we didn't get the cash at the point of sale. We're going to have to get the cash sometime later. So for the cash flow budget in this problem, we're saying that we're making all of the collection in the following month. So if we made the sale this month, we're going to collect it in the following month. That, again, that could be a fairly simplified model. It could be simplified. That could be a good thing to do for budgeting in a simplified model. Uh, and or we could have, you know, some more complex models saying that we're going to get 30% next month or 50% next month. And then you know, 50% the following month or something like that. But in this case, we're going to say for August, I can say that this equals the uh, sales that were on account, I'm sorry, on account in July. So if we made it on account in July, we're going to collect it in August. In September, we're going to say that this equals the AR collections, the cash we're going to collect from the accounts receivable is going to be in September, the amount that we sold on account in August. And then, of course, we have the same kind of issue. Well, where does July come from? Because I'm only looking at the quarter and I don't uh, see uh, anything before July. So, And, of course, where do we have the information before July? If we scroll up to the balance sheet, we would say in the accounts receivable, we currently have 342-248. That's going to be the number that we're going to use because that's as of 630. We're going to collect that in July then. So in July, we're going to collect we got from the balance sheet the um, 342.248. Therefore, we have a total of equals the cash that we're going to receive for the sales that were sold on for cash in July, plus the AR that we're going to receive for sales that happened in the prior month. In August, we're going to equals, and of course you can copy this across, we're going to get the cash from the cash sales that we made in August, plus the cash that we're going to receive from the accounts receivable for the sales that happened in July on account, 70%. And then in September, we're going to have the, the cash received from the sales that happened in September, plus, of course, the sales that were made on account for August. And that will give us the total cash received. like so. And we're going to use this information to create next time our cash budget.